The Anomatron 6000. You know what it is and what it does. Not too long ago, we had it simulate a battle between the SCP Foundation and the slimy, sinister superhero Homelander, who terrorizes the world of the boys. And in the comments, we kept seeing one name pop up, Omni-Man. The terrifying, almost unstoppable Viltrumite warrior who scared the hell out of all of us in Invincible. So, we decided to run a simulation to see if the SCP Foundation could find the same success battling this diabolical, corrupted Superman. The video you're about to see is that simulation. Enjoy, and keep an eye on the skies. It was unthinkable. Panic had spread throughout the Foundation as reports came in that several of the most high-profile groups of interest across the globe had suffered unbearably brutal attacks from an unknown assailant. Notable among the groups targeted were GOC, Global Occult Coalition, as well as its opposing organization, the Serpent's Hand. In all incidents, key buildings belonging to the groups were demolished, and the bodies of all leadership personnel were discovered beaten to a pulp. These massacres appeared to send a terrifying message. Whoever was behind these attacks, the Foundation was most likely next on the chopping block. As all containment sites prepared for the worst, it was Site-17 that received subsequent news on the matter in the most unsettling way imaginable. A small flying object was discovered in the site's airspace and retrieved by an MTF-issue helicopter. The object appeared to be an action figure of world-renowned superhero Omni-Man, and it bore the trademark of Dr. Wondertainment Toys. The mobile task force that discovered the action figure had been on such high alert that the appearance of this toy almost seemed comical. There was uneasy laughter within the helicopter, which immediately turned to silence when the toy began to speak. Boys and girls, for the very first time, Dr. Wondertainment presents to you... RUN! RUN FOR YOUR LIVES! OMNI-MAN IS COMING FOR US ALL! The toy continued what was apparently a pre-recorded voiceover, which became increasingly frightened and desperate as it went along. The contents of the recording confirmed that the one responsible for the devastation of the other groups of interest was none other than Omni-Man himself. His reasons for doing this were unknown but he seemed adamant on wiping out all groups with significant control over the planet's anomalies. Whoever was in charge at Dr. Wondertainment had uncovered the truth shortly before Omni-Man arrived to do the same to their group, and had deployed the toy in a last-ditch effort to warn the SCP Foundation. It was an uncharacteristically opaque gesture from the terrible toy maker, but the Foundation had little choice but to take it seriously. If Earth's most powerful superhero had really gone rogue and was going after influential organizations in some bid to eliminate competition, the Foundation would have to develop appropriate countermeasures as soon as possible. The first priority was securing the safety of the O5 Council, who would most likely be the intended victims of Omni-Man's rampage. Fortunately, their current location was extremely classified, so rather than shuffle to a new location, the Council chose to stay where they were. A conspicuous relocation process could inadvertently give the game away, especially if the aptly named Ah, Redacted! It just launched us into space. Procedure was in effect. Omni-Man was known for his spacefaring capabilities, and was fully capable of pursuing and boarding the O5 Council's getaway shuttle if such a thing was attempted. Additionally, there would be no movement of forces to the location of the O5 Council. Mobile task forces that were already in the field would be instructed to immediately cease their current mission and focus on locating Omni-Man. While the superhero was incredibly dangerous, it was paramount that valuable time was bought so that a better attack plan could be formulated. That was one advantage that the Foundation had over most of the other groups of interest, the reserves to prolong a war of attrition, no matter how strong the enemy was. There was also the matter of establishing protections for Site-17, since Wondertainment had sent the action figure there of all places to deliver the message. It was likely that Omni-Man would be headed there first. Site staff requested the immediate transfer of the infamous mobile task force Tau-5 Samsara, a unit of immortal cyborgs with superhuman physiology. While Omni-Man was known to have fought and defeated everything from the spawn of ancient gods to cyborgs to immortals, the four members of Samsara were all three and had strength in numbers. The request remained pending for several minutes, causing one researcher to blithely remark that the O5 Council had probably called dibs. Fearing that MTF Tau-5 wouldn't arrive to intercept Omni-Man, 
the researchers assessed which anomalies contained on site would be best suited to holding the superhero back. One Keter class SCP in particular immediately came to mind, SCP-4051, a male humanoid with the anomalous ability to create extra-dimensional wormholes. These wormholes could be used to produce any object that SCP-4051 desired, including exceedingly unstable cognito hazards. While SCP-4051's powers were certainly formidable, it was the fact that the humanoid, who went by the name Rainier Miller, had previously been acting as a vigilante in the United States. In other words, Rainier Miller was likely to be of special interest to Omni-Man, even if that interest merely amounted to having one more target to wipe out. While it wouldn't be the only humanoid SCP that could be considered similar to a superhero, 4051 was definitely the closest at hand. Not too long after the discussion took place, the sight radars began to pick up Omni-Man closing in. His approach was extraordinarily fast, breaking through the sound barrier and landing with great force in the center of Site 17. There was no time to waste, and all available guards and mobile task force personnel were ordered to zero in on Omni-Man's location and open fire. As one might expect, bullets weren't exactly effective against the superhero-turned-serial killer, but they did provide a plausible distraction while the researchers mobilized to find other means of neutralizing Omni-Man. It was a terrifying sight watching the costumed man stand there within a hail of bullets, bearing no outward signs of distress aside from a stern facial expression. He moved smoothly through the air towards the nearest soldier and shattered every rib with a single punch. He then grabbed another and used him to bludgeon several other agents. Even with the substantial advantage and raw power, there was a considered tactical reason for each of Omni-Man's movements. He systematically made his way through the site, crushing all within his path with absolute prejudice. There were going to be no survivors if this continued. Fortunately, one of the Site 17 other contingencies was about to come into play. You see, the Foundation had done their research, and with the corroboration of information from other groups including the United States government, had deduced that Omni-Man might have psychological weaknesses that could be exploited. Namely, his teenage son, Mark, otherwise known by his superhero alias, Invincible. While the Foundation was far too cautious to directly contact Invincible, mostly out of fear that the boy could be an accomplice, the next best thing could still stall Omni-Man and give the researchers a chance to get SCP-4051 ready for combat. It certainly took Omni-Man by surprise when he was floating down one of the newly blood-soaked corridors and saw Invincible standing at the end staring him down. Dad, what's going on? Why are you hurting them? Said what appeared to be Mark. Omni-Man stopped in his place and his expression changed to a look of concern. For the first time since he arrived at Site-17, Omni-Man spoke. Mark? Come on, Dad, this is crazy! You should stop this and go back home to Mom! Omni-Man froed his brow. Something was off here. For one, this version of Invincible had both feet on the ground, even though he would have all the same powers of his father. Also, the fact that Invincible had an approach suggested that this individual was in such fear of Omni-Man that it refused to approach. Omni-Man had been caught off guard by this at first, worried that his son could be afraid of him to this extent but it was starting to seem suspicious. Mark was no coward. He had become a superhero like his father because he wanted to protect the world from all manner of threats. Although the difference in combat experience between the two was vast, Omni-Man knew that the Invincible he knew was reckless enough to challenge him, or at least have this conversation at a regular distance. His intuition was right on the money, as this was not Invincible at all, but SCP-953, the polymorphic humanoid instead. While this Keter class SCP was known for taking many forms, usually that of beautiful women, the Foundation staff had given it access, all available information on Omni-Man and Invincible's father-son relationship, and in doing so, successfully convinced it that taking the form of Omni-Man's son was the best path toward self-preservation during this perilous scenario. SCP-953 continued to make attempts at talking to Omni-Man, doing its best to remain still, not wanting to reveal the vulpine features beneath the invincible costume it was wearing, but Omni-Man proved to be too clever for this gambit. He chuckled, then suddenly zoomed forward with his fist raised in front of him. SCP-953 flinched in terror, only to find that Omni-Man had pulled his punch. 
At first, SCP-953 was relieved to still be intact, but this soon dissipated as the humanoid looked at Omni-Man and found none of the compassion that was on his face just moments ago. You're not Mark, Omni-Man said. He's stronger than this. SCP-953 trembled in fear. The polymorphic humanoid only had one card left to play, and it prayed that it worked. 953 shapeshifted again, this time into Omni-Man's wife, Debbie. Her fox-like features were more pronounced in this form, but it was clear that the sight of his human partner's face made Omni-Man hesitant to attack. This hesitation was all the time that the polymorphic humanoid needed to run away, as several guards and SCP-4051 arrived to take over the duty of stalling Omni-Man. Several wormholes opened up around Omni-Man, deploying sonic grenades which stunned him for several seconds. The guards unleashed all of their ammo and drew Omni-Man's aggression while Rainier prepared his next weapon, a wormhole to a pocket dimension filled with flamethrowers, which he directed at Omni-Man, hoping to at least cause some lasting pain if not proper burns. The flames did temporarily obscure his vision, but that didn't hinder him for long as Omni-Man moved straight upwards through the ceiling before descending back down into the building, massacring the guards surrounding SCP-4051. He looked on Rainier with disdain, especially as the humanoid opened a wormhole and pulled out an aluminum baseball bat. You really think a piece of Earthling sports equipment is going to do anything to me? Omni-Man said. It doesn't matter if it does or doesn't, Rainier replied. You're not the hero you once were and someone has to try to stop you." Omni-Man paused, reminded of his own son. Though mere sentiment wouldn't be to spare Rainier Miller the fate of the rest of his planet and its people, but Rainier opened a wormhole directly in front of himself, which contained multiple anti-tank rifles that fired in Omni-Man's direction. The impact didn't phase Omni-Man, but it slowed the superhero down just enough for Rainier to tuck and roll behind him. Rainier reached into another wormhole for a gas mask, which he quickly donned as another one of his wormholes unleashed deadly poison gas into the corridor. Omni-Man held his breath and flew towards Rainier, grabbing his aluminum bat mid-swing and bending it into an L-shape without any apparent effort. Rainier let go of his weapon, but Omni-Man quickly grabbed him by the wrist and lifted him into the air before slamming him down on the ground. Rainier Miller, SCP-4051, was incapacitated, perhaps fatally. Before Omni-Man could confirm his kill, he was tackled and immediately thrown to the nearest wall by the combined force of four individuals in cybernetic armor. Mobile Task Force Tau-5 Samsara had arrived, and together they surrounded Omni-Man and hit him with everything they had. Punches and kicks bombarded him from all angles, offering barely any window for a response. The formation didn't last long, as Omni-Man withstood the hits and maneuvered behind one of the members of Samsara grabbing and snapping the cyborg's neck in one quick motion. One of its fellow members swung for Omni-Man's face, only for him to catch the blow and severely batter the arm of the attacker, rendering it unusable. Omni-Man grabbed the last two members by the throats and squeezed until he heard the familiar pop and crack. Then he let their bodies fall. Of course, this wasn't enough to neutralize Samsara completely. The cyborgs were down, but not out, as their fast regeneration began to fix their injuries. With detached contempt, Omni-Man stomped forcefully on their heads, shattering the skulls of each member of Samsara one by one. That should be a lot harder to fix, Omni-Man thought to himself. He was almost finished here, then it would be on to the next containment site, and eventually to the O5 Council itself. His planet wouldn't need meddlesome groups like the SCP Foundation, made up of inferior humans playing at civilization. He made sure they knew how powerless they were before the rest of the people of Viltrum arrived to complete the conquest of Earth. He applauded the short-lived bravery of Rainier Miller, and in an uncharacteristic moment of mercy, chose not to go back and check if his previous opponent had truly been killed. Omni-Man rationalized that he had already inflicted a killing blow, but deep down, as he concluded his rampage through Site-17 and departed for the site of his next slaughter, he knew that he had subconsciously gave the boy a chance to live. Want to own an SCP of your own? Go to scpswag.com for premium anomalous merchandise. Now go check out Could Homelander's Ego Crush the SCP Foundation? And SCP-076 Able vs. Chainsaw Man, who would have the most lethal weapon? For more crossovers with the world's wildest superheroes.